and welcome to another episode of Farm Girl Fibers and this is a knitting and crafting podcast um, any kind of craft that you might think of you might see on here <clears throat> today there's gonna be knitting some crochet and some weaving um, I am Shauna and I'm the dyer behind Farm Girl, Farm Girl Fibers yarns on Etsy and you can find me on Instagram as S. Um, sorry, I changed it. Instagram, I'm Farm Girl Fibers. Ravelry, I'm still S. L. Hargis. Um, but <clears throat> lots of stuff um, to share today, so I'll try to make it pretty quick. Not many finished objects, um, especially considering it's been a long time since I've podcasted. But anyway, um, lots of lots of projects. So uh, let's get started with some mitts, some fingerless mitts. So I've had this idea um, of a texture and bead design for a while and I thought about doing a hat, which I may be able, I may eventually um, do a hat to match the mitts. But I'm going to have this, um, today is March 27th, it's Wednesday, and so I'm going to have um, this pattern up on Ravelry later today but unfortunately it takes forever to upload a video so it'll be tomorrow before um, before this gets on YouTube but anyway so this is the stars and dreams mitts and hmm, the lights kind of off in here I think probably should have picked another spot but Oh well. Um, I am sitting in front of the living room window, so I thought that that would be good. And I guess you can see. Um, so, <clears throat> it's just a um, simple fingerless mitt pattern um, with a gusset increase for the thumb. And on the top, there is... Um, a texture pattern that um, is inspired by the if you've read the book series a court of thorns and roses the night court symbol is um, three mountains with with three stars so I wanted to take that symbol and make it into a texture pattern for originally a hat and then I decided um, it might be easier to start with mittens because of um, getting the numbers right making the pattern to where you can see it on a hat but you know you don't have to like do crazy amount of beading or um, whatever so I'll <clears throat> keep thinking about the hat version but for now we have mittens and so on each mitt I did four repeats of the texture pattern and it has um, three beads representing the stars I don't know if you can see it at all um, I thought this would be good with the, the I might not be close enough to the window um, so you have three um, beads representing the stars and three little mountain peaks and it's really really easy pattern um, I've got for um, extra small to large size and I have te it's been tested it and um, I made them in about two days one mitten per day so it's pretty pretty fast um, it's sport weight yarn but you could use a different way it was just affect the size like if you wanted to use a fingering weight yarn just um, you know make like if you need a medium make a large or something like that make one size bigger um, if you want to use a DK weight yarn make one size smaller but I used the size small uh, the stitch count for the size, size small which I think is 48 I'm pretty sure it was 48 stitches and I did um, size one needle for the rib and the, the ribbing on both both ends and then I did I think a size two 
one and a half or two, I can't remember now, um, for this part. So anyways, very simple mitts, but I really, really love them. I used um, my sport weight base, which actually I'm about to retire. I'm gonna try a different sport weight base, um, but this is Merino Cashmere Nylon. And <clears throat> um, there's just not a lot of patterns for sport weight out there. So <clears throat> I don't know if I'll continue to carry sport weight, but I do have a little bit of this left, <clears throat> this yarn base, which I could dye up on any color. And it took about 50 grams. So I think I'm going to, well, I had thought about doing 50 grams. I think I'll put up a listing for a few um, bead sets today with 50 grams of um, a dark blue yarn and 12, 24 beads, about 24 beads. Because each glove, each glove took 12 beads. So you need about 24 beads. So I'll do that um, and have that on Etsy uh, listing for 50 gram skein of my honeysuckle base and I'll just do like 24 to 30 beads um, to match. So there's that. <clears throat> um, another one that I'm pretty sure was not finished the last time. I hope maybe I should have went back and watched. But the Vortex Shawl is completely finished. Patterned by Charlotte Bory. And I just um, wrap it around and I think I should have added some some buttons a button you know not some buttons just a button and like um, but I wondered about sewing it together to make it more of a cowl instead of a, a shawl but I just tuck it in and make it a cowl um, which it's very nice and warm and cozy and squishy and I really really like it so the yarn used is um, Bad Wolf Girl Studios I think it's the Corpse Bride, is this Beckledy. And then, um, back before I started selling yarn, I was just dyeing it for myself. So I've got some turquoise on a 100% Superwash Merino base. And then I've got some dark, dark charcoal, gray, like pretty much black, we'll say black, on a Yak, Merino Yak Nylon base that I used to have. So, <clears throat> that's the Vortex Shawl. It is um, brioche, mostly brioche, and then this middle section of garter. Um, and one thing about Charlotte Bory's shawls is that they start out small, and then um, you increase, and then once you start on the other side, you decrease, and it goes in small. So, that's a good thing, um, because one of the worst parts about shawls for me is that sometimes you end up with, you know, like 300 stitches on the needles and it takes quite a while. Um, last finished knitted object is this hat. And this is definitely my favorite hat. Um, I've been wearing it a ton. And the mohair really makes it way, way warmer. So... This is the, a modified Midas hat, and you can see all the, the mohair fuzz, but <clears throat> um, Tristan of Dragon Horde Yarn has a pattern out now that is um, very similar to this. So the Midas hat is for fingering weight yarn, and I use fingering weight held with mohair. Um, the fingering white yarn was, or is, Peruvian Instant Darkness Powder from Bad Wolf Girl Studios, and the mohair was a dark gray charcoal, um, got something, got fuzz, dark gray charcoal from Emily of Wolfiend. And so, I just cast on less stitches. I used, well, I have it wrote down somewhere what needles I used. I think I cast on with a size four needle and whatever the pattern calls for, I may, and I talked about this, I think in the last one, whatever the pattern calls for, I went up one needle size for this hat. I cast on 80 stitches. I did 
the 30 rows, 30 rounds, then um, it's a free, the Midas hat is a free pattern. And um, then you do a pearl, you do an increase, then you do a pearl round, and then you do 30 more, and um, fold the brims, knit them together. So it's a folded brim, and you don't have to do any ribbing, and it still fits. So the brim started with 80 stitches, and went up to 90, and I have notes. I don't remember if I increased again or not. I did switch to size five needles for the, um, the body of the hat. And then I got this pom-pom from, I think it was Trendy Owlet or something like that on Etsy. Um, got them over a year ago. I got a pack of five. Her pom-poms are very, very, very um, reasonably priced. So, <clears throat> there's that. <coughs> and I also took a weaving class at the Yarn Boutique in Decatur, Alabama earlier this month. So, I still need to wash this, and um, you're supposed to heat it. Every time you weave, you're supposed to heat this. I don't know. But anyway, so there's a little shawl that I made. And then I um, really wanted to, I had been thinking about getting a loom anyway. And after I did that class, I needed one. So, I got an Ashford... 24 inch rigid heddle loom um, <clears throat> and I really 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 like it so I have woven again this is gonna have to be washed too I've woven um, a towel <clears throat> it's kind of an oddly shaped kitchen towel but it's okay so I got um, cotton from Hobby Lobby I got the the colored is the I love this cotton and the white is just the sugar or peaches and cream, whichever one it is. I don't remember. And it was on a cone. So I got a big old cone of cotton. And um, I'll make <clears throat> several dish towels, maybe. <coughs> I also got a skein of blue and gray. So I'll do that next. And on this one, you can tell, like at the beginning, I had a bit of a rough start. So we've got, you know, like... This bit right here is, you know, but then towards the end, it gets really nice. It's smooth and even. And um, so you can definitely tell that just weaving this one thing um, from the beginning to the end, my weaving changed quite a lot. So that's good. Um, for me, I find that weaving is pretty easy to... To learn um, the worst part was warping I warped it backwards and then I had to like do some cutting and extra tying and I had to, anyways um, so once I figured out how to get the warp on there correctly it was a much easier um, the second one went quite a bit smoother I didn't have nearly so much trouble warping but I didn't end up with a way too long towel I don't know um so I think I'll cut it um and make it into two short towels maybe um you can still see that well I guess you can see I don't know I can see that the, the edge is still a bit wonky um, where sometimes I pull it a little bit tight and sometimes I don't pull it as tight, but it's not too bad. And this edge is actually, you know, it's actually worse. Um, so right there where the, this strap is, it did get a bit tight. It goes, whoop, but it'll be all right. So I decided um, I was gonna try strapping. So I put um, the warp, when I was warping it, I put some colored straps in there and then um, I kind of just changed colors at random bits so I think I might cut it like right here and might do a hem stitch and then cut um, a bit and that way 
because if I fold it in half, that's a much more reasonable length for a towel. Um, so I think I'll do that <clears throat> and it'll be good. <coughs> then, um, what else do I, oh, almost finished object is Vlad the Vampire Bat. So this is a pattern by, um, Lydia Trisult, who is Lolly Lala. And um, she has the cutest crocheted um, stuffed toy animal things. So I've been working on Vlad the Vampire Bat for a very, very long time. But he, he's finally finished, except for the cape. And the cape's getting very close to being finished. So um, I used leftovers from my So Faded sweater. And also from the gray is from um, a sweater I did for Wade. And since I was using leftovers, I didn't have enough of this dark color, which is the original um, version of Nevermore. <clears throat> Nevermore is not quite as dark now. It's um, a bit more variated. But anyway, I really like it anyways. Um, I like it both ways. So um, this is the dark version of Nevermore that was the original. I kind of like... <clears throat> the new version has a bit more depth. It's not quite as black. But anyway, so um, this is all crochet, and it's all single crochet, so in theory it should be very easy. But trying to crochet on these itty-bitty stitches whenever the yarn is very, very dark, like, you know, black, essentially, um, it's a bit hard. And especially since I do most of my crocheting and knitting at night time, even harder. But I was running out of this and um, this yarn. And so Vlad ended up having gray pants. And I wanted the front of his ears to be the Nevermore color um, to match his hood. But I wasn't going to have enough to do the back. So um, the back of his ears is gray. And then his cape is right here. His cape's pretty awesome. Um, his cape is going to be gray to match the back of his ears. And this, um, the cape uses double crochet and triple crochet. And I've never really done anything with triple crochet, but I have now. So, um... It's pretty cool, and it'd be really cool, I think, to have um, a shawl that's similar to this. I think you could do it. I don't know. I guess you might have to start with more stitches in the beginning. But anyway, um, so the cape's going to have to be lightly blocked. I might just steam it with the iron. Um, but it'll go around Vlad like this. Now, one thing with the cape, and I didn't realize this, because it didn't say in the in the pattern description thing, but the cape, um, well, everything is, all of Vlad is made with fingering weight yarn and whatever size hook, but the cape, it, whenever I got to it, it said to use a yarn that's half the size of the yarn you have been using, which I assume would be lace weight. I don't have lace weight, unless you count mohair, and I wasn't going to make a mohair cape. Um, that might be kind of cool, but I wasn't going to do it. Um, so, I thought there is absolutely no way, because Vlad is a scrappy project. Really, I should probably have been doing this for Scrappy Sunday or something. Um, but he's a scrappy project because I'm using leftovers, and so I wasn't going to buy two colors of lace weight yarn for this wee little bit. So, um, anyway, I decided, you know what? It, and it said to use half the thickness yarn because of drape. So I thought, well, you know what? If it needs to be drapey, I'll just go up a needle size. So I went up a needle size. I don't know what needle size I went to. Size C? Yeah, I think it's a C, whatever that is. Um, I don't crochet much. So, went up to a size C, and, um, so I ended it, like, two rows short, because it was going to be too long if I didn't. Um, 
So if you ever make plaid, just go up a hook size and um, it'll still be drapey. Then this is the inside. So it calls for a purple yarn for the inside, but again, we're doing scrappy. So you'll, you know, layer it like this and then I, I think you sew it, um, not sew it, I don't know, crochet around the edge or something. But anyways, they'll be layered and this will be, you know, the same. Each half is the same um, size. And this is <clears throat> one of my colorways from last Halloween. And I think I'm going to bring it back because I love it. But this is Witch Ink Hour. And it has lime green, purple, blue, and some black speckles. And I really like this. And I'm, I'm a little bit jealous of Vlad, to be honest, because this, um, this right here would make a really, really awesome cowl or shawl or something. Um, I wouldn't want it as a cow with the points, but it would make a really cool shawl for a person. So, <clears throat> Vlad's um, cape is almost finished. I don't know how many more rows I have, but not very many. Um, let's see. There's three or four. Three or four more rows. Um, <clears throat> so, that's got that. And to hold my stitch here on crochet, you know, if you don't this is the one little stitch that can unravel. So to hold it, I've got this little charm from Simply Serving. I decided to use the Halloween charm because um, Vlad is a bat, vampire bat. Um, I apologize. But anyways, um, it's Simply Serving, little gingerbread um, Halloween house with ghosts and pumpkins and um, little Halloween candy cane things here. So, really cool. Oh, and the candy corn at the top. And um, I got this one on the lobster claw clasp. I have been getting the leverback earring type ones um, recently, though, and I like those better, I think. So, there's that. Um, after I get the cape done, I just have to make a little collar, and flat will be good to go. Um... Then I've got my Halloween socks, because I do Halloween all year long, apparently. Um, Halloween is one of my favorite holidays. But here's my Halloween knee sock. This is Nomadic Yarns in the Hocus Pocus colorway. Is it I Smell Children? Whatever her Hocus Pocus colorway is, it's called. So, we've got the green purple red for the the sanderson sisters and then blacks in there because it's halloween they have a cauldron i don't know um so i just finished this one oh almost forgot the toe is from toe creations um and the heel is the red from that so she had a rainbow set and um megan from toe creations um, had a rainbow set, and so I got that, and um, using it for, uh, it's like in mini skeins, so I'm using it for contrasting toes, heels, and cuffs, which is why I got it, um, because we always need, you know, contrast, and I think it's, um, I don't think it's merino, I think it's 7525 superwash wool and nylon, but it's actually, it's actually soft, and, um, it feels like it'll be really good for um, heels because they get the most wear in my socks anyway. I guess in everybody's socks probably. Then this, I always, whenever I order from Nomadic Yarns, I always get the twisty base, which is, I think it's the twisty base. It's the 80-20, the, the one that's the high twist. Um, merino nylon It's my favorite sock yarn. Well, it's my second favorite sock yarn, I guess. <clears throat> um... And then for the other one, I am on the cuff. Now, since it is knee socks, because um, I've seen some people post that they can't make tall socks because their calves, their legs are big. My calves are huge. I'm sure I've talked about this before. But I start um, with 56, yeah, 56 stitches for the foot. Oh, 
the I did do a toe up heel flap and gusset which is apparently something I mean it's harder to find patterns for that and a lot of people don't do heel flap and gusset because they like toe up socks and whatever but this um, heel flap and gusset was from the stargazer socks I talked about them in the previous episode and um, it's a pattern by small bird workshop or something like that um, but I did modify it so um, for the gusset increase, it starts right here, um, and then I do an increase round, and I knit one round, and then increase and knit. So I increase every other round. The pattern does say to increase every round, and I don't remember where she says to start it or anything like that. But I do start the heel earlier. I mean, I start the gusset earlier, and I increase every other round, so, um, that just seems to fit my foot better. Like I can get it over my heel better that way. And then I follow her directions for the heel turn. It's a short row. Yes, short row heel turn. I don't remember what the directions say, but I use a German short row. Um, sometimes directions call for a wrap and turn. Even anytime it says short row, I use German short row though. Um, even if it says wrap and turn, you can substitute German short row, no problem. And so German short rows where you like pull the yarn around and then you have like, it looks like two stitches, they call it a double stitch. Then I just do the standard slip stitch um, heel flap where you slip knit, slip knit, <clears throat> and then on the other side you just purl. And so go back up to 56 stitches, <clears throat> then <coughs> at some point on up here, I increased to 60, then I increased to 64, and since these are even taller than what I usually make, I did go up to a 1.5, um, US 1.5, which is, what, a 2.5 millimeter, I think, um, for the, the cuff. Now, these, um, needles here are the nitpicks, whatever they are, and, um, I didn't know what I was doing whenever I got these, so I got the 5 inch. They're slightly short, so I have to use four instead of just three. Um, so most time you see people using DPNs, it makes like a triangle. Well, um, since they're five inch needles, mine makes the square because I have to use um, extra. But um, I did get another pair of the size 1.5s and they are six inches. So um, I, think I, if, I think I would suggest six inch. So there's, these ones are the dream, dreams knitters pride dreams or whatever it is um so anyway i just didn't switch back um so there's that here's my little halloween bag that i made last year um oh, figured halloween socks need a halloween bag and then another project that i had hoped to get finished um for the legacy fiber arts knit along is this um plumpy shawl pattern by Andrea Mowry. That's the back. Let's we'll switch it around. So here's the front. And this pattern, I really, really like it. And I usually have problems with Andrea Mowry patterns because it takes more concentration than I usually want to give um, to a, especially a shawl pattern. So, but this, the plumpy shawl is, um, I mean, I love it. I haven't, it's one of them where, um, after the first couple of, after the first two rows, it's just the same thing. It's just a two row repeat. So, um, and then you can keep track of the rows with this little, um, nice knitted spine. Um, so you can keep track of the rows with that. You don't have to keep moving a stitch marker. Um, I do leave a stitch marker there just like I have this one here. Um, just to, you know, track how far I've gone. So, it starts off with garter. Then, um, you do where it's half brioche, half garter, which I think is really cool. Then you do, um, the second color. Like, you do color one, color one and two, color two, garter stitch. Then you do some more garter and, um, brioche in the same row then so I'm on whichever section I'm over halfway done 
it doesn't seem, yeah, it is, it's probably going to be just as big as most of her shawls. I don't think it's going to be as big as the Find Your Fade. It starts out the same way, but, um, I don't think, it's not going to be, I don't think it's going to be that big. Um, so I did the sport weight version because I had sport weight yarn. This is, um, a base that I was trying out, um, it come from most of these vases that I've talked about so far probably come from wool to die for I know this one did and like I don't see that it's a big secret where I get my yarn so anyways um this is the 80 20 sport weight from wool to die for and it's really good but um wool to die for shipping is really expensive I think considering they only have to ship it like two states. I can't really, I can never remember if they're from Virginia or West Virginia. But anyway, Virginia, West Virginia is not that far from Tennessee. So I think for, I just, I feel like the shipping is, and then I have to, if I pay more shipping, I'm gonna have to factor that into the price of the yarn. So then the yarn's gonna cost more for whoever buys it. So I just, um, don't think I'm gonna be getting any more yarn from them but um, their yarns really nice and a lot of dyers use them there's absolutely nothing wrong with this I think for a shawl the 80 20 base might not be um, as drapey as some other bases because it has the high twist but it's still fun um, to knit with this base would make an excellent pair of uh, socks I've got some saved over there for socks to be quite honest um but it's very nice i am using weeping angels um enchanted nightmares which is another halloween color and then one of my all-time favorites is um nevermore right here so the gray is Weeping Angels, then the purpley is Enchanted Nightmares, and then we got Weeping Angels, um, and they all kind of fade together. So for this shawl, you could use contrast colors. I just happened to have these, and they um, didn't have as much contrast as I had thought they were would. So I'd started a, I'd started the shift cowl with them to be honest. Um, it just was not. I could not tell where it's got that mosaic, I think, color work. I couldn't tell, it got lost. So it was a lot of work and you couldn't even tell that it was there. So I stopped that, took it out, frogged it, and started the plumpy shawl and I'm so happy I did. I'll come back to the shift cowl someday. Um, and then <clears throat> something that I'm really excited about working on is another no frills sweater. And this time I am using mohair. So this is a new, new colorway. Can you see it? This is a new colorway called the Gray Lady. Harry Potter reference. Here it is in the cake. Here it is in the skein. So we have um, lots of, of, of different speckles. We've got blue, purple, gray. No, sorry, black. Blue, purple, black speckles. Um, sometimes the purple breaks, so you get a few little spots of pink, which I think is really cool. So I think it's kind of cool how you get, um, and I didn't use any pink dye, but you know, to make purple, you have to have pink or red and blue. So sometimes um, the purple dye breaks and you can see um, the pink that was in it. Perhaps you can see the blue and I just think it's the blue that I use, but I did put blue speckles on here. So that's the gray lady and I'm holding that with silver wings mohair, which is just a pale silvery gray. Um, and this mohair is so freaking fuzzy. I don't even know. Next time I won't set up right here. At least not in the morning because the sun comes. I should have set, turned it around really because the sun comes from that direction. Um, 
I, I don't know why I didn't do that. It would have saved a lot of trouble, but I'm not re-recording, sorry. Um, so I held these two together. Um, that was one, the, the gray lady is one of my new colors. And whenever I knit up the little swatch, I loved it so much, I had to go and start the no frills. I had some other yarn caked up to make a no frills, but um, I kept putting it off. And now I'm really glad I did because these were just meant to be. So I don't have, I've not gotten very far. Um, my wrist kind of started hurting a little over a week ago. And um, I've been, not knitting as much. That's one reason why Vlad's actually getting finished because I went to crocheting. I got this crazy ginormous goofy looking thing for my crochet hook um, so that way I don't have to grip it so much. Um, but I think it's getting better. It's getting better now. I need to go to the chiropractor and get something, get my neck readjusted again. Um, I'm gonna have some more of this pattern bags soon, working on those. Um, I've also started a little blanket to take with me to the shows to just show um, some of my colors. So this one right here is in the shop now, it's Visible Spectrum. This is the Dr. Meets Rose. I'm gonna dye some more of that this week. This is the Gray Lady, there's one of these in the shop. And this is Crucio, which is this month's um, Not Mystery Anymore Yarn Club. And Crucio is based on Bellatrix, which is my favorite villain from Harry Potter. And she's my favorite villain because Helena Bonham Carter is a freaking good actress. So I don't think I liked Bellatrix until... The movie came out and um, she just made Bellatrix awesome. Um, if you don't know who I'm talking about, it's, um, if you, I don't know, she's in a lot of Johnny Depp movies and she, um, I'm pretty sure she's Tim Burton's wife or something like that because she's in a lot of Tim Burton movies, um, but she's really awesome and she makes the perfect she was the perfect actress for Bellatrix. Um, so there's what I've got so far. And I have some more new colors I want to get swatched up. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm just, I didn't actually look up the grandma's dishcloth pattern, but I think this is the same thing. So I start with three stitches in one corner. I increase till I get to I forgot now. I wrote it down somewhere. 34, I think. 37. Anyway, I increase until I get to whatever makes it this wide. Then I decrease back down to three and bind off. Then I take um, black because that's what I had. <clears throat> Whenever I run out of black, I may use a different color. I may get some more black. I don't know. But I use Knit Picks Felici. No, sorry. Knit Picks Stroll in black. And I just um, single crochet around then I double crochet, then um, I whip stitch it together or whatever with an invisible, invisible sew, I don't know what it was. But anyways, I turn it right sides together like you would if you were sewing something and sew the two squares together. And then, you know, sew this way and make it this way. So I've got some more, I want to try to get um, switched up and Um, this is Crucio in cake form. I really like Crucio. Um, this is Crucio in skein form. This one ended up with a bit more green, but I still like it. Um, so, you know, you have to have the green for Avada Kedavra and the Dark Mark, and then black and purpley for Bellatrix. And there's a little bit of blue in here too, bright blue. Um, <clears throat> so that's that. <coughs> Oops. Oh, I'll show my blanket real fast. It's gonna be a while probably till I get to work on it again. But 
you're not gonna be able to see all of it but I have um, done quite a bit more on the bits and bobs blanket I think I'm up to like 30 ish inches now so I had calculated if I did two inches a week I would get done in 12 weeks I've not knit on it the last two weeks so I guess from now on if I get do two inches a week I'll get done in 12 weeks but um, I might need to focus on one inch a week to save my wrist so that's that <clears throat> um, and in case you haven't looked up um, any of the Lolly Lala patterns she has a ton of the cutest things. So I got the bugs, butterflies, and bees, or I don't know. It didn't even have a bee in it. I don't know if it said bee. But anyways, bugs and butterflies and moths or whatever book. And I got that on the iBooks, so that way I'd have it on my phone and I wouldn't have to worry about carrying a book around for the pattern. Um, <clears throat> and so I think I'm going to make a little caterpillar out of this um, leftover corpse bride. Because I just think that'd be kind of cool to have a... A neon alien light caterpillar um, and I had caked this up a while back for um, a bits and bobs blanket I really wish I had left that right there out because that would be the perfect perfect um, color for the firefly the lightning bug pattern she has sometime I'll make the lightning bug um, this was gonna be for bits and bobs <clears throat> but I'm not sure I'm not really sure now because I still have quite a bit left here so I don't even know if I'm gonna need this um, because like I said it's 30 I think it's actually a little over 30 inches then I have some more odds and end things down here um, so I don't know for sure I need to weigh this again and see how much this is I've been tempted to make a scrappy um, sweater because the rainbow in the storm pattern by knit diaries i think um calls for you to use um a dark well any sort of solid color solid color which i'm thinking a dark gray and um it's fingering weight then you hold that double with um multi different colors so she won't you know has you start like i don't remember if it's top down or bottom up but anyways you do the colors of the rainbow and then the sleeves are just the solid color held double so i was thinking about instead of doing rainbow colors using that scrappy cake and holding it with a dark gray yarn and having you know the body of it be all different colors and then the arms be just dark gray but then i don't know if i'd actually wear that I'm thinking the dark gray would tone down any of the brighter colors. My other option is to use my mini skein set that I got from Bad Wolf Girl Studios. It's the um, professors of the Hogwarts professors. And <clears throat> there's a lot of blues in those colors. So I might, um, I might use that, I'm not sure. But anyway, um, we're getting on up way too long. I always talk too, far, too much. Um, I save it too long, I have too much to talk about. And so if you um, want to check out my shop, I have lots of new colors. So here is Spectro Specs. And I'm going to be um, testing out a new DK base that I got. I do have it dyed on a DK, a 7525 um, Merino Nylon, Superwash Merino Nylon. But I don't think I'll be keeping um, this DK base because I saw that they had a new one. I get um, all this yarn comes from Yarn Undyed, and I saw that they had a brand new DK base that was Superwash Merino Cashmere Nylon. So it's gonna be more expensive than the 7525, but I'm gonna test that out, and I'm gonna see which one I want. I think I'm gonna keep the cashmere. I'm gonna get rid of my sport weight cashmere, and I'll have a DK cashmere maybe. But I could change. But anyway, Spectro Specs, it's um, pink, um, neon purple and black speckles and it's awesome with um blue skies so i want to make the patiki cowl by aroha knits i'm really bad at pronunciations so i usually jumble everything up um this was the contrast color i dyed for 
Crucio. I want to make a garter snake cowl out of these two. Um, oh, I'm sitting on the floor and I'm starting to get a little stiff. Silver wings, which I think pairs really well with Impossible Girl. Actually, those might not be in the shop. I think I forgot to list those. <clears throat> um, you've already saw Visible Spectrum, rainbow color. There is some mohair. Um, this colorway ended up, I thought it was going to be a disaster, but it ended up being really awesome. And it has um, yellow, orange, and purple speckles. It is crocus, based on the flower. And I dyed up hyacinth. And spring sunshine to go with it. You can actually use these three in a plumpy shawl. Um, then, of course, we've got the... Um, what am I saying? Weeping Angels is always in the shop. There is a really nice evergreen. Someday, someday I will make a Weasley sweater, and it's going to be evergreen. Um, these two, Grey Lady and Evergreen, pair wonderfully together. Then, what else do I got? Oh, here it is. Winter Forest. Winter Forest is blue, green, and brown speckles. That pairs really well with um, evergreen and favorite jeans. This would make a really awesome shawl or faded sweater or cowl, whatever you want to make with it. Um, and that might be all that's in the shop. I have several skeins of each color. Here's the second batch of Visible Spectrum. Um, so Visible Spectrum does have, well it has pink instead of red, but red, orange, yellow, green, blue. <clears throat> the only problem is I don't think it has indigo. I think it just goes straight from blue to purple. But it'll be okay. We can't have everything all the time. So, um, it's almost Roy G. Biv, but not quite. Um, close enough. And I think that's all that's in the shop. Here's another a favorite jeans. I really like that one, too. Yep. So... So those are all in the shop <clears throat> now. Um, this is the last week to get Crucio. And um, if you order it with the mini, it'll come with 20 grams of this color, which again, I really think a garter snake cow would look awesome with that. Um, I have this one caked up. So I might, um, I might make a garter snake cow with this, but my wrist is gonna have to get better before I can do that. Um, I'm not sure if it's like actually, I think it's partly my wrist, but I think it's mostly my neck. So I need to go back to the chiropractor. Um, is there anything else I want to talk about? I think that's about all. Um, I, oh, I do have a, I didn't make a bunny for my sister, um, her baby she's gonna have a baby in May so I made um, the sock yarn bunny by Susan Anderson yes Susan Anderson Susan B Anderson um, so I made that for her but I gifted it to her last weekend at her baby shower and so I don't have that um, but I think that's it for now so hopefully I can podcast it again in a week or two and not save everything for, you know, forever. Um, so I'll see you again. And if you want to check in with what I'm making through the week, then check Instagram for shop update news and whatever I'm making that week. Bye-bye.